Welcome to Access 2010 Form Properties. I'm Trainer Laurie. What are form properties? Well, I call properties the back door into code. It helps you customize the form for security so that people can't uh, delete records that you don't want them to delete. Uh, will only affect the data in the form, so that means you can have multiple versions of a form and have different people have different versions, so you can choose the level of security that you want. First, you click the element that you want, in this case, a text box and then you click Property Sheet. When you open it up, you can see that it is the property for the text box. You can also right-click on the element and find properties. The first one I want to discuss is really two, and it's under the Data tab, and it's Enabled and Locked. If you enable something, that means you can click in it. If it's locked, it means you can't type in it. That means that you could click to do a search, for example. So uh, a very popular one people ask me about is a, an ID. I don't want them to be able to change it because they can't. So I just want them to be able to click in it to do a search by it. And um, so to uh, search or filter, then you would say enabled yes, locked yes. So you would want it locked, but you would also want it enabled. Another good one is the Auto Tab and the Tab Stop again. These are two that work very closely together. Auto Tab, uh, in this case, let's say our phone number has 13 characters. You can see it has 13 characters in it. And when I've put in the 13 characters, I want it to automatically go right down to the extension. And extension only has four characters, and as soon as I put in the four characters, then I want it to automatically move my cursor to the next field. In other words, to automatically tab to the next, rec uh, the next field so I don't have to do it. Well, if you set your size of your field to the 13 characters and then you come in here and you can say auto tab yes it will automatically move your cursor the next one is tab stop and tab index tab stop meaning um, maybe I don't want it to stop for example if it's a primary key I don't want the tab to stop there because I can't change it anyway so you could change that to tab stop no but if you do have it as yes you do have the option to choose which uh, stop on the form it's going to be. But I don't find the numbers very useful, so instead I would recommend right-clicking on the um, uh, text box that you want to stop at and change the tab order there. And that way you can see it in order and you can move them around. So it's, it's really convenient. If you have a memo field that uh, will grow or you want it to grow or shrink based on how much data you have in it. For example, you can see this one is small because there's nothing in it, but as soon as I start putting some data in it, it actually grows. And that's called can grow, can shrink. And this would be a memo field instead of just a text field. So anything that, that uh, can grow like that. And it's under the format, and you can choose can grow, can shrink. That means it will be the size that you design it until data goes into it, and then it makes it bigger or smaller based on the data that you put in it an image field. Uh, for example, um, I want a picture of, of each employee. The problem is, is our default is called clip. And you can see what it's done is, is it's, it's cropped, essentially, down um, my face. But if you use stretch, it will stretch it to fit the height. And so that's not really appropriate, although it makes me look quite thin. <laughs> it is a little awkward. So zoom is usually the one that we want, because that will fit the width of uh, whatever size you've made uh, your uh, image. Now we're going to look at form level properties. The other is you had to be on a specific element like a, a text box or a memo field. But now it's going to be in the whole form and that's in the top left corner if you click that uh, box it tur turns it into black and then when you click your property sheet it will say this is for the whole form. There's 108 available. We're not going to go through all of them but I'll show you some good ones. The record lock type. This is really important if you want some security in your form. Uh, this one says, what if two people are in the same record at the same time making different changes? Who wins? Well, it is the last person in the field, whoever uh, exits the field last. But you don't want some kind of problem like that if one person thinks they made a change and they go back and look at it and it looks different from what they changed. They think, what did I do? Well, that's because they should have had it as an edited record. In other words, while somebody else is in it, the other person can't see the record. They can't open it. Allow edits, allow deletions, allow additions. This is really good for security as well, because if I say no to all these, then I have what I call my vice president's form. 
<laughs> or a, a read-only form. Somebody, if you don't trust them, the, they might accidentally make some changes you don't want them to make. Then you can um, change all those to no. And that means they can look, but they can't change. And you can see here, they can't even create a new record. Sometimes, though, I've had people say, Lori, I don't want to uh, accidentally overwrite information when I'm putting in a new record, and I keep forgetting to go to the new record. Uh, so how can I make it so it's blank until I put something in it? And that is called data entry. So if you change that to yes, of course, all your forms are data entry as long as you allow uh, additions and changes. But this means it's only data entry, and you won't see any of your records. Make sure that you also say allow additions, too, and that way you can have a new record. Every time you put in a new record, though, it goes back to blank again. The data is in there. It just can't be seen in that form. Picture properties. If I want a picture on the whole background of my form, uh, and I could choose if I just wanted it in the header or just the detail by clicking on the gray bars. But in this case, I want it on the whole form. Then I can uh, come into the properties, and there's lots of options in here. So I would want it embedded, and I can use the, the ellipsis here, the dot dot dot, to go find the uh, the form, the picture that I want for the back of the form. And I have some other options as well. If I want to change the whole background color, I can do that by clicking in background color and choosing the ellipsis, that dot dot dot. So I can change the color in there. Or I can even change if I want an alternate, because as you can see, this is actually in the detail area, not in the whole form area. So it's just in the section. So you can have each um, record be a different color. Another form property is uh, for the entire form. If, if I just have a, a startup form, like a switchboard, and I don't want uh, the, there to be the record navigators on it, and I don't want all these options on it, you can come in here and choose what you do and don't want on that startup form. Default view means how many records would you like to see in the form at one time. The single form is the uh, original default. If you don't make any changes, that means you see one record at a time. However, if you have a little bit of information, but you want to see a lot of records at a time, you can change it to continuous. And this allows you to see as many as will fit on the screen, depending on how big your screen is. Or if you prefer the look uh, of a table where you can see virtually all the records at a time, or lots and lots more, then um, you can use the form. But you still have, if you use the data sheet form, you still have the ability to have all the great security features that you can have in a form. So that's it's a nice option. Well, that's all for this time. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like. And if you have requests for other topics, please email me at trainerlaurie at live.com. Thank you.